so I have the OnePlus 13 and this is a dual SIM phone and I'm going to explain everything about the SIM card management and about the dual SIM and how it works uh, some of the stuff you can tweak and I'm just going to go through the whole thing and uh, yeah just going to explain everything I can about the dual SIM functionality and the SIM card management of the OnePlus 13. So for starters you can actually insert two physical nano SIM cards into this phone. There's a SIM tray at the bottom of the phone where you can insert two physical nano SIM cards. Now I have an, a whole extensive video on that, which I'll link down below, but it, you, got, you actually can do that. Now on top of two physical nano SIM cards, you can actually also add eSIM. So the phone supports two physical SIM cards, which are nano SIM cards. On top of that, it also supports eSIM. So as you can see, we have the eSIM option here and you can add as many eSIM profiles as you want. Now, no matter how many SIM cards you have, you could have uh, two physical SIM cards and four eSIM profiles. This is a dual SIM phone. And that means no matter how many SIM cards, physical SIM cards and SIM card profiles you have, you can only have two lines active at the same time. And that's why it's called a dual SIM phone. So, how do you manage these two SIM cards? So once you've inserted or added an eSIM, all you have to do is go to settings and then go to mobile network and this is where you manage your stuff. So currently I have this physical SIM card which is called SIM1 by default and then I have an eSIM which is active and it's called Safaricom which is just my SIM2 but now you can also go ahead and rename specific SIM cards. So you can tap on any SIM card. For instance, I can tap on that. And then if I don't want to call it SIM1, I can call it anything else I want. So for instance, I can just come here and change uh, to work, personal, secondary SIM. So for instance, if I call it work and tap on done, and then I go back, you can now see that SIM card is going to be labeled work. So I can do that for my work SIM card and for my home SIM card depending on what I want. You can also add a default name, I mean a custom name. So for instance, if you come to here and you don't want any of these names, you can tap on custom and then give it a custom name. So for instance, I'll just give this uh, the service provider name, tap on done, and that's going to be the name of my SIM one. So that's how you can do that. Now on top of that, you can tap on any SIM card and manage it individually. So if you want to manage this one, and if you want to manage this one, you can tap on either and manage them individually. Now here, you can disable any SIM card at any point. So for instance, I have disabled that one. And I can use the phone with only one SIM card, even though I have two SIM cards in the phone. And anytime I want to enable it, I can just go ahead and enable that SIM card. So it's really up to me. And then we have a SIM number. So you can actually set the particular number for this uh, SIM card so that you don't forget it in future. And then this is where you can enable and disable things like data roaming. You can uh, enable LTE calls, which is 4G for phone calls. And then you can choose the preferred network. So whether you have 5G, 4G, uh, if you want to enable 5G, you can just select that option. If you don't want 5G and you just want 4G, you can enable that from there. And then of course you can tweak things like the access point. These are usually settings that are provided or are sent to you by your service provider by default. You don't need to change or touch any of them, but if you need to, that's where you do that. And then you have the operator name. That's where you can find the uh, name of your operator. So you can do the same for the other SIM card. Now, since we have a dual SIM setup, we have calling option where you can choose which is a default SIM card used to make calls. So anytime you go to the phone book and dial a number or just from the dialing pad, which SIM card is used to make that call by default. So you can ch change from this SIM card to this SIM card, or you can set always ask. So when you set always ask, anytime you press the call button, it's going to give you a pop-up to choose which SIM card you want to use for that specific call. So you can do that. Same goes for internet. You can choose which SIM card uh, you, you, you'll use mobile internet for by default. And then also you have automatic data mobile data switching. Now this one, 
is uh, tied to the internet option. So let's say I have this Safaricom SIM card as my default mobile data SIM card, which I use to browse the internet. Now, in case I'm in a place that does not have good connection, I can allow my phone to automatically switch to the other SIM card so that I can continue having good and stable internet connection. So that's what happens when you enable mobile data switching. If you don't want that, you can leave that disabled. And then of course you have uh, mobile data during calls. So do you want to be able to access mobile data during calls? Now you can only do this if, you're, if you have a SIM card which is capable of at least 4G and 5G and you're in an area that has 4G accessibility or 4G network minimum. Of course, 4G and 5G work the same way. So if you don't want that, you can turn that off. And if you want it, you can turn it on. Now, when you turn it on or off, it's going to be tied to the default SIM card you have for your mobile data connection. And then of course you have mobile data. You can turn it off and on from here. But then of course you also know you can do the same from here. So you can turn it off and on from here as well. So data usage. Now, if you come here, there's going to be a lot about data usage and this is mobile data usage. And you have, you can manage mobile data usage for both SIM cards independently. So we have one SIM card and the other SIM card here. And you can see information like uh, data usage limit. You can set daily data usage limit. You can even set monthly data usage limit. So once the limit has been crossed, then the mobile data stops working for that particular SIM card. And you can set limits individually for either SIM card. And then you have, uh, yeah, we have that. We also have data saving. You can enable and disable data saving individually for the different SIM cards. And let me go back. So now we have eSIM. Now, this is what controls the entire eSIM functionality. So if you come here, if you, you can actually disable all eSIMs by turning that off. That basically turns off the eSIM functionality, the entire eSIM functionality on your phone. And you can turn it on from here. And only when you turn it on, do you get these other options. Okay, so we have, this is my eSIM profile for that Safaricom uh, SIM card. And if I tap on the three dot menu, I can disable this particular eSIM individually and I can delete it from here. Now also I can add eSIM. Like I said, you can add as many eSIM profiles as you want. Although you can only have a maximum of two SIM cards working at the same time, whether it's two physical SIM cards, whether it's one eSIM and one physical SIM card, whether it's two eSIMs, they have to be two maximum. And then of course you have the option to reset and this will delete all eSIM profiles on your phone. Okay. So that's, that's that. And then you have some uh, OnePlus exclusive features like Beacon Link, which basically uses Bluetooth to make calls. And then you have O Roaming, which is basically purchase an international uh, data package to access the internet without a SIM card. So it's basically an, a roaming eSIM. And then if you tap on more settings, you have Smart 5G, which automatically switch between 5G and 4G to reduce battery consumption. And that's when that should uh, work when you have a SIM card that supports 5G. And it's actually the default SIM card and you've actually enabled 5G on that particular SIM card. So now when you go to uh, more settings, you should be able to switch smart 5G on and off. All right. And that's basically it. That's how to manage the dual SIM OnePlus 13 or to manage the SIM cards in a dual SIM OnePlus 13. Now, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like possibly also subscribe for more tips. It really does help the channel out. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. And I will talk to you in the next one. Good luck.